people don't just want to have like a great night's sleep for the sake of it. You want to sleep great because of how you feel in the morning, because of what it propels you to do during the day, the energy, the productivity, the mind, the clarity, the mood. You need to know how you're sleeping in order to improve it. You need to prioritize it. So there's a lot of habit building and there's the understanding of why sleep matters. And then you need to optimize it through your habits or through products or through many other things that you could do. Treating it that way sort of really defines why we call it sleep fitness and not something else. Welcome back to the Fit Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Benary. Today, I'm joined by Alexandra Zatarain, co-founder and VP of Brand and Marketing at 8Sleep. In this episode, we talk about the company's smart mattress that tracks sleep, regulates temperature, and much more. We discuss the concept of sleep fitness and the company's plan to improve sleep performance. Plus, Alex shares 8Sleep's moonshots, like the possibility of compressing sleep to under six hours. Let's get into it. Hi, Alex. Welcome to Fit Insider. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, we were chatting a little bit offline. I've talked to Mateo on the podcast. It's been maybe two years now, um, at least a year and a half. Quite a lot, I'm sure, has been going on at 8Sleep. So for, for folks who aren't familiar, uh, maybe just a quick intro about you and what you're up to at 8Sleep. Intro about me. Well, I'm one of the co-founders of 8Sleep. Uh, I lead our brand and marketing team. 8Sleep, for those who don't know, is a health and wellness company focused on sleep fitness. We develop technology to help people sleep better. So my part in all of this is helping sell all these amazing products that we make and also ensuring that we're building is really a, a company that is driven by a mission and that we are able to bring actual good benefits to people who buy our products. So it's not just selling you product, but making sure that your lifestyle is changing and you're seeing a lot of benefits in your health. For sure. And I think uh, maybe as a jumping off point, in terms of even positioning and that mission and what you're working on and how it improves lives, the kind of decision or strategy behind calling it sleep fitness, right? When there's so many other people talking about all these various aspects of you know, sleep, sleep aids, sleep trackers, um, can you just talk about maybe the inception or the idea behind sleep fitness and then how you actually define it? Yeah. So sleep fitness came about a few years into the company, actually. So it wasn't how we were defining ourselves initially. And what, what happened is we realized that there was a sort of gap, even in the language that we have to be able to speak about sleep in a state of health. There was no way to describe what it meant to be sleep healthy. And so that's where like sleep fitness comes in. You can be sleep fit. Um, we're all very familiar with, you know, physical fitness and even now mental fitness is something we'll talk about, but what does it mean to be healthy in your sleep? So we wanted to create that language. And the reason why the language is important is because we need to give people the tools to be able to speak about this, right? If you're aspiring to achieve a certain milestone, to live a certain lifestyle, you want to be able to define what that is. And so we did this exercise and we came up with the concept of sleep fitness and what it embodies as a concept is really connected to what we always believed about sleep, even as we founded Eight Sleep. So before the term sleep fitness existed, we did um, cement in, in part of our values as a company that we believe sleep is a means to an end. People don't just want to have like a great night's sleep for the sake of it. You want to sleep great because of how you feel in the morning, because of how what it propels you to do during the day, the energy, the productivity, the mind, the clarity, the mood. Um, so it is a means to an end, and it is something that should be measured, prioritized, and optimized. Uh, and that's sort of a unique perspective we have in this market and in this space. A lot of other companies may tell you, you know, go to sleep, like spend a lazy Sunday in bed, or like, you know, Mateo says a lot, like eat waffles in bed. But like for us, that's not what sleep is. Our perspective is about measuring. You need to know how you're sleeping in order to improve it. Um, you need to prioritize it. So there's a lot of habit building and there's the, the understanding of why sleep matters in the space I should make for it during my day. And then you need to optimize it, whether it is through your habits or through products or through many other things that you could do. Um, but treating it that way sort of really defines why we call it sleep fitness and not something else. Yeah, I think it's hugely important and really like well-timed with this evolution of not only the kind of health and wellness and fitness consumer, but also sleep optimization, health optimization in general, and even people being willing to, or, you know, the education around how important sleep is, it's shifting from hustle culture and pulling all nighters to like, even as you say it, we need to invest in our sleep so we can 
you know, go harder the next day and improve our performance and outputs on so many different levels. When you think about how that kind of industry and even the approach has shifted from wrist worn devices to rings, headbands, all sorts of apps, where do you see Eight Sleep fitting into that ecosystem? It starts from what we saw when we started the company, actually. So what we saw in the space was that this was many years ago. There were companies building products for sleep, mainly in three dimensions. There is a sort of comfort. So mattresses, pillows, bedding. A lot of these companies are amazing what they do, but that doesn't necessarily solve your problems. Um, wearables or trackers, at the time they were in their infancy, and some of the trackers that were doing fitness tracking started to do sleep tracking. Or there were a lot of mobile applications that you could use for tracking your sleep. And so that, you know, even today, those products can give you data, and some of them are starting to give you more of the behavioral coaching, but that's it. That's sort of where their influence in better sleep ends. Um, most of those companies actually are not really built for sleep. Like they start somewhere else and then they realize people want to track their sleep and they sort of jump that chasm. Um, and that's very important, right? Because your mission needs to be aligned with the purpose and why you're building these products. And then the third category was pharma companies that make sleep aids and like pills basically that aren't good for you. They're not giving you real sleep and they're actually bad for your health. So beyond addiction, like they're actually bad for you. Um, and so we're like, well, wait a second. Like, why are these companies dominating the sleep aids, as you were describing, right? And why, why are these the companies that people go to for quote unquote solutions in their sleep when they're actually not solutions? Some of them may be partial solutions or they may help, but they're not solving the problems. That was the aha for us. The idea that there has to be an, a, a company that is actually mission driven, that measures their success and their ability to help people sleep better, not in selling products. Like your success is tied to, am I actually helping people sleep better? And there has to be a company that is using real innovation to solve the problems, not to just sell you products because it's what people want right now. It's like, you know, everyone wants to track, let's build more trackers. No, like what is actually the need? What can we solve? And that means we built a company that is very freaking hard to build. Like I'm not saying that this is the easiest thing in the world, even though everyone in the world sleeps and everyone has sleep problems. It's really complicated to be a mission driven company. Um, and it takes time to bring a lot of these innovations to market uh, because you're trying to solve things a little bit differently. So that's sort of like what we saw. And then from there, it's been a journey to actually define, well, what are the problems? What are the technologies we can use? What are all the things in the future we could solve, et cetera? Yeah. Speaking to that journey and bringing this product to market, it's like, I think it was what, like 2014 that you guys started the company? Yep. So yeah, it, it has been quite a while and it was you know, Y Combinator, and then I think a Kickstarter, some, some type of crowdfunding. And then now, obviously, more recently, getting to this growth stage, and really, you know, really trying to expand in, in not only in terms of sleep, but health overall, and get the product out there in the market and, and continue to grow it. What has it been like making that transition from, hey, we're just getting this thing and trying to make sure that the technology actually works to like, okay, now let's get to the growth stage and really ramp it up? It's been crazy. <laughs> so it's definitely um, a, a very crazy journey. But what makes it rewarding is the measure of success that we have. I think that that is what all in all uh, makes you look back and say, wow, like there's actually been tremendous progress because we don't measure that progress again. And like how many units we've sold and which we've made. That is important in running a business or a venture backed company. Of course, that needs to exist. But what we are able to say today about the impact our products are having in people's lives, we were not able to say seven years ago, six years ago, even probably four years ago. Um, that is part of building innovation that you put to market, uh, you refine, you improve, you learn, and then you test, you validate the claims, right? Um, but I think that that's what sort of makes it all worth it and the big difference between the early stage versus the growth stage for a company like us. And I think for anyone who's maybe not familiar or hasn't done this. I think I'm obviously super tuned into this world. So I see it pretty much constantly, but in terms of that validation, it's like go search eight sleep on Twitter basically and yeah. see all the people that are sharing screenshots of, you know, their sleep fitness or talking about their bed or pod that just got delivered and what that experience has been like. Um, how do you think about that? Almost like what is 
built in word of mouth and then how you leverage that and use that in terms of a marketing strategy or you know, is it something that is just more organic and you, you know, you love to see it, but you just kind of let it go. So how do you think about that? Um, I mean, you obviously have to use it. I think anyone who leads marketing at a company that has such love from the community would be just really dumb not to leverage all of these amazing commentaries. So we find ways to use it and, and it varies. It's, it's about how do you surface it in the moments when other people may be considering a purchase, it may be used for awareness. We've actually had some pretty successful campaigns that even went on television, national television, with some of our real members sort of recording themselves talking about like, what do they love about the pod and how to improve their sleep? So you can use it in so many ways, but it really has to come from authentic, real testimonials. That's the only way that it works. Like you cannot hack your way into positive word of mouth. This doesn't mean it's always positive. There's going to be people for whom the pod is not the problem solver or they don't like it or they have an issue. That happens across any industry and any product. Um, but when you see such like an inflection of positive commentary and particularly for us, the most valuable pieces, when we see in third party data, so people who use wearables or whoop and or an Apple watch, you know, Garmin, whatever it is that they're using and they see in their third party device that the pod actually improved their sleep, their HRV, their recovery, their score, score, like whatever it is, there's nothing like it because that's not the pod telling you you're sleeping better and that's sort of like our own ecosystem. That's someone else's product telling you that they're seeing a difference in what this temperature regulation and this automated temperature regulation is doing for your sleep. So that's sort of the big aha that um, we we love to see and we are just always seeing organically. So we're constantly thinking of ways like how can that become more of something we invite people to experiment with and discover if they see those patterns in their data so that maybe it excites other members to share their stories. Yeah, it's a huge boost, like you said, to see basically third parties va validating that. Um, maybe down that path of marketing, I think there's been a number of kind of partnerships announced in terms of F1 teams, CrossFitters, I think putting um, some eight sleep products in Airbnbs. Uh, I think even, I can't remember if it was this year or last year, but a uh, partnership with uh, Barry's, the boutique fitness studio. Um, how are you thinking about these partnerships when they come up? Uh, how are you then kind of executing them? And uh, have you seen or what type of uh, results have you seen from the partnerships? I'd start by saying that we as a company go about building our brand in a way that is like a movement. So as a mission-driven company, it, it's not just about selling the products, but we need to be ambassadors of what it means to be sleep fit. How do you achieve it? How do you achieve it even if you don't have our products, right? That's most important to us than anything else. So then when you think about the marketing, the marketing needs to take on a similar path where um, the education of sleep fitness, making that even something that you discover, you learn about, you understand, you desire, you aspire to be sleep fit, right? That is sort of goal number one. And a great way to achieve that for us has been through these partnerships that you were describing. So whether that is becoming the official sleep fitness partner for Barry's, it's a brand that we love. It is a brand that made sense because their customer base definitely very similar to sort of the customer we're speaking to today. Um, and seeing that sort of mutual respect and potential integration for telling the story of how you can be fit by going to berries, but you can also be sleep fit by sleeping on the pod just made so much sense. Um, a lot of their trainers sleeping on the product, their CEO and founders sleeping on the product and talking about it, right? So the authenticity needs to be there, but then also saying, well, how do we use this for marketing? Um, so that was sort of the, the idea behind some of the partnerships there with Barry's, Mercedes, Formula One team is the same. It is a sport that is growing really fast. Uh, it is a sport that I myself have followed for over 10 years. Mateo, who's my co-founder and my husband has followed for all his life, right? So we always admired and saw sort of the parallels of the sport in which innovation is really important. And there is this play of the men and the machine happening every day when they go on the track, right? And when you think about it, um, that there is also that play with the pod when you go and sleep on it every night, uh, the men and the machines sort of become one and, and make the men better and more powerful in their recovery. And we always thought like this would be such an amazing story to tell. Um, and in addition to that, it's actually a sport that's very grueling. People are traveling across 
many time zones throughout the year. This season particularly is even longer. And so there's an opportunity to say, well, can our products help a team perform better? And that was the impetus for the partnership with the Mercedes team. It was them uh, looking to actually bring on board brands that could be their suppliers. It's not just the sponsors. Like, how do you supply me with your innovations in the health and wellness space to make my team perform better? Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. One thing when you're talking about that, that, you know, I hadn't thought about, I've thought about it as it relates to other aspects of my lifestyle and a healthy lifestyle in general, but traveling, um, when you think about, you know, if you have invest in the pod for your house, but then you're on the road a bunch, obviously maybe that's where the Airbnb kind of partnership comes in, but how do you think about kind of breaking into that market and, and continuing to serve people as they do travel and maybe when they're not in their house? Yes. Our, our goal is that one day everyone should sleep on a pod, right? And the challenge is on us is like, how do we make it so great that everyone wants it? How do we make it affordable enough? How do we find other ways maybe that the purchase can be done so that the, the uh, burden of the price is not just all on the consumer, right? So that's things we think about all the time at Eight Sleep is, again, mission-driven. You want to get to everyone. This is not just about being an exclusive product for athletes, right? Athletes are just inspiring figures that are helping us tell the story of why this matters, but we want to get to every single bed in the world. And as you mentioned, hotels make so much sense. And the, the idea for a hospitality presence came about because our members on Twitter started saying, well, I hate traveling because I miss my pod. And that's actually one of the first aha moments that people have. In addition to the, my wearables are showing that my sleep is, is improving. When people travel for the first time, people who sleep on the pod will travel for the first time and say, wow, I miss my pod. And so that aha, uh -huh, we thought, well, that's great because then they'll share and they'll be like, yeah, I miss my pod. But that is also an opportunity. And the more you think about it, whether you are a hotel, an Airbnb, a VRBO, whatever other place you're, certain people are paying you to stay there. The reason why people pay you to stay there is because they need a place to sleep. That's their main purpose. So why are all these places not optimizing for sleep? That's what people are paying for. And it's just, to me, it just makes no sense that hotels aren't investing in the absolutely best place for people to sleep. Everything needs to be optimized for it, every single thing. And most hotels are not, probably I would say 95% of them are not. There are some that are definitely waking up to that idea and they're trying to make some investments. Um, but there's a huge opportunity there, even just for hotels, whether they do with eight sleep or not, to bring about a change and say, well, this is why people pay us. What are we doing in this in this regard? And actually, something that we just launched this week was a traveler sleep guide. So what we saw is that there's very little transparency on the quality of sleep that you get in any given hotel and Airbnb or VRBO and all these things, right? We should be rating these places based on the quality of sleep that you're getting. And travelers should be able to find all of that information and say, well, in this hotel, I've got you know, a great mattress, but terrible light. There's a lot of light coming in, maybe sometimes even through the door, through the hallway, right? Or through emergency signs inside of the room. Like we should know because for all of us who are trying to be sleep fit, who are investing in these things at home, we want to know what is it going to be like when I go to that hotel room and am I going to be able to at least have an environment that is conducive to good night's sleep? So how long until it's the eight sleep hotel, right? You see <laughs> different companies, right? Investing in different fitness products, investing in different, you know, spa like features. Uh, Equinox, for example, has like an Equinox hotel built around that kind of lifestyle. Um, is that somewhere on the roadmap or maybe you can kind of strong arm some folks into uh, partnering to create that experience? Yeah. I, I think it would be awesome, right? I mean, we never say no to, to ideas in the future. Obviously there's a journey of a company and there's like, a time for it and when it could make sense. But for now, our focus is on, you were mentioning that the partnership earlier with Airbnb host is how do we bring it to people's environments? Airbnb places are already renting or hotels. There's a lot of partnerships going on with hotels and a lot of things we'll be announcing in that space. So um, that's the focus for now. And we are already starting to see people who try it in these hotels where we're piloting programs and then they go ahead and buy it. So um, that's just even better for us. The awareness is is being built through this program, but then also it becomes a place of discovery. Sure. Maybe zooming out a little bit and thinking about the ecosystem. So, you know, the mattress cover, the mattress, the app, when you think about 
building this ecosystem and being mission driven and enhancing sleep fitness, what is it that, you know, eight sleep is going to go ahead and continue to build versus where you choose to integrate maybe with other partners, providers, or I think you've even done this to this point, like, or maybe sell different products right on the yeah. eight sleep website. So how do you think about partnering versus building and how that ecosystem continues to expand? There's a few dimensions in it. First, is, is it something that we we as a company believe we want to or we should be really good at? So there's an expertise we may just have to develop in-house versus selling someone else's products. Um, and so that's a, 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 some of the framing that we use. For example, we partner with brands that we admire and love like Thorn for supplements or Hyperize for a lot of these recovery tools. Um, because we don't believe that that's our lane right now. That's not something that we want to be great at right now, that we believe we have to be great at in order to achieve our mission. Um, and so that's that's how we think of those types of partnerships. On the other side, and in instances, for example, of the recent acquisition that we made of, of a company called Span Health was more thinking, well, there's expertise. Does some, has someone else built a certain expertise? And by joining forces, do we think we can go faster? and um, launch new products faster or achieve a certain milestone faster, that's important for the business. And I think that's a, a great way to analyze you know, if, if it makes sense to partner or if it makes sense to acquire a company. Um, and I think it, it sort of applies the same when you're deciding to even start a new project within the company and hire a team, right? Like you wanna know is, you know, does it make sense now? What is this gonna mean for the business? How long is it gonna take? And are there ways to like speed up that process? And startups are always a race against time. Um, and so if it can help you get there faster, um, a lot of times the answer will be, well, yes, why don't, why don't we go that route? For sure. And then from a kind of business model perspective, so you mentioned the span health acquisition and the opportunity to get into at least the way it's messaged is this, uh, sleep coaching and thinking about how that fits in, you know, a one-time kind of pod or mattress purchase being able to do a personalized or subscription-based premium kind of product or coaching, uh, enhancing that, you know, the revenue opportunities. How are you thinking about that ecosystem overall and including this acquisition in terms of how that enables you to continue to grow revenue streams and enhance the business model? The North Star is we need to be able to solve the world's sleep problems. That's the first thing. Um, and so what are the products that we need to build in order to achieve that? then the list is long. There's probably a lot of products that we will have to build over time to achieve that. Um, so, you know, with the pod, that is, the, you, you, you were talking about the pod mattress, pod cover, the technology that the pod offers is tackling the biggest environmental factor that can affect your sleep, which is temperature, and especially the temperature in your bed. So we said, well, we'll build that. And we'll build it in a way that is smart. It can personalize the temperature for each side of the bed. It can cool it, it can heat. It knows when you're sleeping. It knows when you're awake. And it'll manage it for you, right? And we're seeing the influence of all of that thermal regulation in people's sleep. Like we know that close to 50% of our members within seven days of sleeping on the pod see an increase in their HRV of at least 10%. So that means like the pod is actually helping them recover better. Uh, and we're starting to run a lot of other validation um, studies that will be coming out soon on like, what does it mean, not just for HRV, but for quality of sleep and things like that. So it's really fascinating to see that what science had already proven for many decades, that temperature was important for sleep and that cooling down in order to achieve sleep was important. Then you make the technology and then you actually see it happening in, in, in real life. So that's pretty cool. But there was another side that was sort of still missing in a way. And, and that was a bit of what drove this thinking on uh, the acquisition of a company like Span and the expertise they have built, which is you can adjust the environment as much as you want. And there's a lot of other products we're working on for that, but you also need to help people build better habits. And so that is sort of another lane we're working on. Because again, if the North Star is built all the products people need to sleep better, well, we eventually will have to tackle the behavioral side anyways. So uh, it felt like this was a really good time to do it. There's a huge demand in the market for people who want to make sense out of all of the data out there. And we've always been the type of company that thinks like, put this data in the hands of people, let people gather their data, let people analyze their data. There's no reason why you need to be like, just in your own world and closed off. Give the users their own information. They gave it to you as a company and then let them try to make sense of it through any service that they decide to go to. And, and that's what we hope that they, the users will do with the service that we're um, working on is that we can help them in that journey to make sense out of it uh, with, with a digital first platform that will make it sort of 
easier and over time, you know, like any startup will aerate and we'll try to build the best solution for it. Yeah, I think what, down that path, one of the more interesting things that you all have talked about as a company is this idea of compressing sleep. So maybe like sleeping less than so whatever the number is, six hours or less, but feeling like you slept eight hours or more. How realistic is that? And like, how close are we to doing something like that? That is sort of when you think, well, can we colonize Mars, right? I think any, any company that is a mission driven should have a, a really big idea of what the world could look like if we become successful, because the bar should always go higher and higher. Um, and so, yeah, I was describing before, well, we want to be in every bed. Well, great. What happens after you're in every bed? Well, what happens is that we want to find a way to optimize sleep to perfection to the point where hopefully we can give you the same level of recovery you would get in eight hours today, but you could get it in six hours, right? And so that's part of like, like big moonshot. Um, how feasible is it? It probably is more than we think. Uh, the reality is like first, everything we've learned about sleep to date have, has been studied in a few subjects at a time or in environments that are not ideal. So there's still a lot of things we need to comprehend about sleep and what drives the need for these eight hours that we've been told we should sleep. Um, is that really optimal? Is that what everyone needs? Is that what you need every night? We don't know. There's a lot of more questions than answers right now. Um, and so it could be more feasible than we believe today. The second part of it, which you have probably heard Mateo, my co-founder, talk about is the fact that sleep nowadays is pretty inefficient. Um, you know, there's a lot of time spent in maybe like light sleep and interruptions. And so what would happen just you know, from a first principle perspective, you were thinking about optimizing all of those minutes to perfection. Could it be possible that you would need less minutes because the minutes you do get are actually perfect sleep versus getting more minutes of which maybe 30, 40% of them are sort of un crappy sleep or unoptimized sleep. Um, where they don't really make a difference. And so that that's sort of where the idea came from for Mateo. And he's really obsessed with this concept. And it's something that eventually his company will want to tackle and figure out if it's possible and if it's healthy and sort of the implications of that long term too. Yeah, it's super interesting and certainly a, a cool mission and goal to strive towards nonetheless. The idea of just like flipping a switch, going right to sleep, getting, you know, the best possible sleep, and then being able to like kind of basically snap out of it. Um, I'll certainly subscribe to that as it, <laughs> as it comes about. Uh, maybe another one, and you can talk about how you think about it and how realistic it might be, is this idea of like the smart home. Basically, it's been talked about for years and years, and we're moving more in that direction. You have remote patient monitoring and smart toilets and sensors and all these different things. But the idea of being able to tackle other aspects of health while you sleep. I don't remember maybe where I read it or saw it initially, but it was this idea of how eight sleep then intersects with healthcare, right? And, and yep. de detecting and sensing some of these things that are going on with your body. Uh, how do you think about that? And is it, is it kind of also this idea that's on the roadmap somewhere that you hope to get to? And when you do, then you'll, you'll kind of cross that bridge then. Yeah, we're actually probably much closer to those things than we think. There's a, a lot of um, things that team's already working on in that direction. And the reasoning for that is we started, when we started the company, we brought sensors, non-wearable sensors into the bed. And those sensors are basically functioning like a stethoscope. They're able to tell when you're sleeping, when you're not, but also your heart rate of rest, your heart rate variability, your respiratory rates are varying from biometrics that can signal a lot of things happening in your body. Um, and so we thought, well, what if there was the opportunity to put more sensors? Are there more things that would be able to track over time? And the beauty of, of Eight Sleep and, and specifically the pod product that we have is that you're sleeping on it for years. And so it sort of sees patterns in what is normal for you, what is the regular trend. Um, and it could tell you when something's changing. Like we've actually had multiple cases of people who have, they DM a tone Twitter and they'll say, well, you're product saved my life because, you know, or my, your product told me I had COVID or right? in a lot of these things we don't diagnose. We're not a diagnostics device, but people will do their own conclusions out of the patterns that they built over months and months and some people years sleeping on the pod. And they're able to see, well, wow, like when the pod alerted me that my HRV was really low or that my resting heart rate was really high, um, something just seemed off. And like, I went to the hospital and I needed an intervention. Like we've had cases like that. So it means there's a lot of potential to put more sensors, probably some imaging, interesting things that could detect early signals of things developing in your body and warn you about them. So 
part of this moonshot is, well, can your pod save your life? It can't. There's no reason why it can't. And the only thing that sounds off to people right now is that we're just not used to thinking that our beds could be that. But there's no reason why they cannot. You know, someone at some point is going to make this happen. It makes so much sense. You go to sleep for seven to nine, hopefully for seven to nine hours every night. And it's like getting a health checkup. And there is absolutely no reason why you should go to bed on a dumb mattress that is not able to tell you all of these things. And it's just a matter of time before someone builds this technology and is able to redefine the expectation that each of us has of what a bed should do for us. Yeah, the the vision and the mission driven aspect is certainly coming through when you talk about, you know, putting this bed into everybody's home, making sure they're sleeping on it, thinking about how it fits in with healthcare, thinking about the idea of, you know, compressing sleep. All these things are, are super powerful and it's exciting to to know and and see that somebody is working on that, right? And to your point that it's not just I don't want to say wasted time because it's it's necessary, right? You need it to be able to live and perform and all those things, but putting it to better use maybe than than it just this this seven to nine hours that we're we're laying there. Yeah, getting towards the end of the conversation and and as we wrap up and think about how you plot the course to continue down that path. Um, you know, we talked about the span acquisition, I think it was last year, raised some new funding, something like eighty-six million dollars. And continuing to, you know, get into this growth stage and really ramp up what is on the roadmap, maybe the rest of this year, what are you looking forward to, or maybe we should look out for uh, as you continue down that path? A lot of innovation, hardware, software. I think that is where people should definitely stay tuned. Yeah, I think that, that that's, that's probably where most of the energy is going in the team right now. And more exciting things on, on the brand side too. How do we continue to build this movement, tell the story, uh, show the value of our products through these partnerships? Awesome. Well, uh, we'll get you out of here on this. Um, as people are listening to this, they want to check it out and learn more. Where would you point them? What's the best way to kind of get the full download on 8sleep? 8sleep.com. So go there to check out our products, our story, or find us on Twitter too. We're pretty active there. Awesome. Thanks so much for uh, making time today and definitely excited to, to share the conversation. Yes, thank you.